Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Farm Lords, Manor Fields. I mean, Farmville. What are we playing? Oh yeah, we're making farms. <laughs> Alright, so we're in the region of the Knoll, my agricultural focused region, and I've extended it just a little bit since the last episode. I've added these two extra fields here at the back, and I've removed the burgers plot that was down here because its fence, unfortunately, was overlapping this field, and it just didn't look too good, just couldn't handle it. So I was hoping it would go away on load, as I have a few other bugs we're going to talk about in a moment that do go away on load, but I've managed to figure out what they are as well now. Anyway, so we've removed that plot. I'll put a new one in. I think we can kind of orientate it a bit better in the future, but right now there's a pile of supplies on the ground, so we'll have to wait until they get cleared. In their place, in that house's place, there are two new plots here, and there's two plots here. So I've just added those two in. So basically, I just added a little road that kind of comes down here, a little road that goes out a little further, and just filled in a bit. That's all. So we'll kind of see all of it. I just did it because it was a lot of, um, I mean, off camera, because it was a lot of uh, back and forth trying to get a layout that I was happy with. So now that I'm happy with it, we all get to enjoy it as it gets built. Uh, work area is empty. What's that about? Ooh, the berry deposit is empty. In July. That seems a little early. But okay. We do have 160 berries, so I guess they did a good job. Right, anyways, just as a bit of a recap here in this region, this is the region called the Knoll. It's so cool actually seeing the farms kind of spreading out that way. And basically, this is my agricultural backbone that's going to support the army from Swords, our main region in the future. Uh, or at least, not even support the army, but support the population growth over there, hoping to get a lot of importing of goods or exporting from this region into that one. So what we need to do is also set up the pack stations for that which are up and running, and then we need to order mules. Now, I haven't tested this. I said I was going to, but I ran into this really big bug that I was troubleshooting for quite a while, so I didn't get to, but I'm guessing... Well, anyway, let's just get into it. Let's go over to here and see is the bug present right now. It is. So I'm not scrolling back right now. The camera is just indefinitely raising and infinitely raising, and it will just go forever so we can see out beyond the horizon and break all the illusion. We don't want to do that. Because the devs are aware now of this bug, and they're working on it, and I've hopefully provided a little bit more clarity as to what's going on. So, it seems to be a bug with um, Tier 3 burgage plots, specifically the smaller houses. All right, so we have the big ones here. Yeah, so these ones look nice and big, pretty cool. But for some reason, raising my camera over here was just... Or bringing my camera over here would just raise it forever, and I was like, oh no, and I can't see anything now. And I'm trying... I'm scrolling in, it doesn't do anything, and then we fix it. So... A little bit messy, that one. Let's see if I can find the other issue with this. There's another kind of cool thing that you can spot. Oh, yeah. Is it there? No, it's not. Right. Well, anyways, at this little shrine here, <laughs> I saw a house just sitting there. A tier 3 burgage plot just sitting there. And I was like, what the hell is that? So this is what helped me identify what the issue was. I was like, oh, so there seems to be a collision box. In the collision bug, it seems like this house here is nowhere to be found. I'm actually confident it's probably somewhere on the map and probably somewhere fairly central, like a 0, zero coordinate or something like that, whatever it might be in the center. Anyways, deleting this house and this plot fixes the problem, so we're just going to get rid of it. That cam camera bug shouldn't happen again. Now, as for this one, it's a really weird bug because depending on how we load the game, it might be working and it might not. A little behind the scenes for you is... You know the way on several times I start the video and it loads in and you see the camera panning down? I might have to do that three or four times because this house is bugged. Um, where it'll say that it's still under construction even though it's clearly finished. And it might be something to do with the fact that it's paused. But it does seem to be a reoccurring theme for me anyway with Tier 3 Burgish Plots. Never had the issue with Tier 2 or 1. And uh, the fact that Tier 3 seem to have varying different sized models... My hunch is that something to do with that. Some translation where it's trying to work out the size of it, the bounding box gets broken, it gets reset to a 0, zero coordinate, and therefore your camera thinks it's on top of a building and it just keeps going and going and going until it can pull back ahead of it. That's my guess. Anyway, game development's complicated, who knows? It could be even, I'm sure it's even more complicated than behind the scenes about what's really going on. The fact that you can load into the game, loading a game means it's actually building the game right there in front of you. It's just taking in the coordinates of all the buildings and then putting them back down. And the, you know, the instances of those things. So it's quite interesting that that could go wrong or be different from load to load, even if nothing's changed. Uh, so there must be some 
variable in there that's that changes depending on something in the game is quite interesting anyway for me it's i find it interesting but anyway i just thought the reason i did want to mention it is just because they're aware of the bug i've been i had some feedback now i've given all that information and i'm like i've actually figured out how to like at least get rid of it uh, because at first when the camera was rising i was like this is it i can't I can't play anymore I can't look over the main town uh, without the camera just raising. But then I was like, oh, I managed to figure out that building, which is great. So hopefully they can narrow it down now. But I did think it was worth at least talking about here just for a minute because maybe you'll get it too if you're into playing the game. So if it happens, look for your tier 3 plots that might be looking a bit funky. There might be something going on there and delete them. Um, but yeah, if it's something else, who knows. Right, anyways, hopefully that's all caught up. We're still waiting on these things to get built, so we'll just, yeah, there's not much we can do here. We're growing. We have room for 15 potential houses or families, and there's 11 people currently living here. Right, there's really not much to do then. We'll head back over to swords. So I'm thinking, because these are so weirdly shaped anyway, and they don't really fit the way the plots have been done, I'm probably just going to get rid of them and we'll rebuild them. So, a bit of a waste of money and effort on that, but nothing too bad. I think we could just put the plots back down and maybe have less houses or something, but I'll have to wait for the storage piles to get removed, and then the goats are going to run off. <laughs> Fritz and Ditz and Viet and Viet. Whew. Anyway, sorry if it was a bit of a long-winded explanation, but there you go. Um, so, what we would like to do is work on pack stations, yeah? We'll put a, a family on this. There's no barter at the moment. So what could we send the Null? And what could we get out of it? Because you have to send something and get something back. If we read this... Use this building to set up a barter connection, allowing you to send and receive goods between this and another region in your command. It employs mules to transport up to 20 goods per trip. Right, so clicking barter connection doesn't do anything. And then I notice that all my stalls are empty. Possibly the only way to actually get mules is by clicking this. So we'll click this. Hopefully get one brought in. Because in the livestock trader, I do have 20 mules as listed at two per head. But we're not getting any, so that seems to be a way to just force that to happen, right? So barter send. What would we like to send the null? We could send them charcoal. Yeah, 132 charcoal. Sure, let's just do it as a test, right? We'll send charcoal and we'll receive firewood because we can at least turn that back into charcoal, yeah? Barter value five times. When moving things between regions, the exchange value of goods needs to match. For instance, if you exchange iron at, let's say, 14 silver per unit for firewood at 7 silver per unit, the barter value is two times. You get two firewood for every iron. Oh. Oh, that's super interesting. I did not see that before. So we have a barter value of five. Yeah, so they're going to send out five firewood and they're going to receive one charcoal. That's kind of interesting because you can turn firewood, two of it, into one charcoal. So it's not a great deal for them. They're giving a lot of firewood out for very little charcoal back. It's probably not super efficient, but I'd like to see this just working once, just to see it working. Stable space. So this building itself has a stable, so maybe I didn't need to build them myself at all. And we have a family assigned to here, although they don't have names. And we can have a permanent livestock assigned, but I assume these would have to be mules, no? We could assign one just to see what happens. Oh yeah, it must be looking for a mule. Despite the uh, the icon. All right, cool. Just learning. All seems good. We're actually uh, getting quite low on approval. What's the problem? Taxation and a lack of entertainment. Well, I'm thoroughly entertained. Don't know about you. We'll upgrade this to tier three and this to tier three. Finally, completing the two rows. And that's probably as far as we can make it out of the uh, kind of granary slash marketplace area before we have to maybe start building around this side of the town. But I'm loving this place. I was really just. I just think it looks great. It's nothing that I've done. I just think the game looks amazing. and A very simple, basic kind of layout can make it look so natural, I think. But yeah, I don't know. I haven't got to read the comments of the previous episode yet, so I'll be curious to see what people think of the layout that I've gone for. You can almost see a sort of Fibonacci sequence pattern popping out here. <laughs> the way the outer ones are like bigger and it's kind of wrapping around in a way. It wasn't intentional. I'm still thinking about where are the where's the church and the market and stuff really going to go. Probably in the center. Church maybe somewhere down the street a little bit or something. Not too sure just yet. And, the, the you know, more and more houses and stuff. The problem is it's just, fertility is just amazing everywhere. So I'm not really too sure exactly where that should go. If um, the fertility is bad, for instance, or even mediocre, it just becomes, like, good for something else in those places. So 
can really go wherever we want, I suppose. Oh yeah, bartering. Oh, he's on his way now. <coughs> Pack station worker bartering. So they're literally just walking all the way out to the Knoll. Wow. Alright, I thought they'd need the mule. But maybe they don't have one yet. So transporting pack station workers is Agnes. And I'm guessing she's going to go pick up in the storehouse some charcoal? Is there a way we can see what she's carrying? No. But I would assume so, right? And she's... Oh, she did go to the one that does store charcoal. So it must be. And she's heading off straight over. So she's going to walk it. Wow. Yeah, shout out. Shout out. In the rain. Walking all that way. God, it's such heavy rain as well again. It's probably just a blur on YouTube. It's quite cool the way you can just pin that to your screen as well. So I'm just watching them heading heading towards the knoll. I wonder if they're going to follow the road the whole way. It does have a road that cuts into the left and up. All right, they've arrived. They've arrived. They're here. Wow, what a journey. That's so cool that they actually just walk it. But yeah, they must be just carrying everything themselves. I wonder does a mule allow you to carry more? Could they be going directly to the houses? So they're heading over to the farms. So strange, man. <laughs> I just never would have guessed. Oh, there is a storehouse out this way. Maybe that's where they're heading. That's so cool, walking up the new farms. That's funny. He said, why am I carrying this alone? That's a good point. Man, these guys must hate each other, right? They came from the same place. They have the same journey and destination. They're like, no, we're not walking together. <laughs> Instead of falling out on the way up here. I'm just really curious to see how much um, charcoal they're going to deposit in here now. But I was right. They did go to the storehouse, at least. So they skipped the closest storehouse and they went straight for this one. I, I have no idea why. Boom. And there we go. One charcoal. Now the question is... Oh, they say, now it says getting the mule. Oh, he's got a long walk to go. So my question basically now would be, like, where are you going to get the firewood from for this exchange to happen, right? He's just dropped in another charcoal. So they carried just literally one each. And now they're heading back. Hey, our windmill is done. Let's have a look at this place. How nice is that, huh? Oh, oh my God. Look at it. Oh, the birds in the distance. How'd you do it? How'd you do it, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> People say they're waiting. I think they should start plowing, I thought, at the end of autumn. We've seen them do that before. And we have a livestock dedicated here, Herman. And this He's a little bit too friendly with Herman, I think. But um, yeah, maybe he'll bring him out to the farm so then they can get plowing. Oh, some of our houses are done. Nice, so these two are finished. And these two. And I totally messed that one up. Because there's no vegetable plot on that one. That was a mistake. But these two can be done. And we can have additional plots added on. Right. I'm going to delete these then. And we can rebuild this. I'm confident we can get the shape right. But let me redo that one. And this one doesn't have the pile out here anymore. So we can maybe do this one now. So let's try starting here. And bring it along to create our face. Oh yeah, look at that. So that'll be the big back plot. We can actually make it even push it back all the way to the houses. I guess we'll just make use of all the space, even though it gives the houses a bit extra room for some reason. Like here seems like the optimal dotted line, the middle dotted line between the plots, yeah? Between the vegetable patch and the houses. But if we want to extend it to make use of the full road, that gets pushed back further out. What a shame. We're so close. That is pretty good. And we could just have a little cut through thing. Yeah, let's do that. Why not? Because there's the line there. Maybe... Oh, we could put a well there. That could look kind of nice. That way it gives us a reason for saying, like, the, that's why the thing ended here. Can we do that with no curve, no? Why is it doing that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Get to work, lads. Pretty good. We're almost there. Come on, Darren. You can do this. You're a gamer. Oh, yeah. You're going to try and tell me that I can't do that. All right. Let's go with a well. Damn. Close 
but n just not good enough, ultimately. Yeah, what a shame. Oh well. No? Even this can't go there, no? Oh! Oh, found the sweet spot. Oh my god. Sure, why not? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna zoom all the way back now and see can we find that pack station. See where they're at in their journey now. Getting the mule, says Conrad. I'm gonna order another mule. I mean, he's a long way to go before he gets that mule. These two are transporting. I wonder, I didn't catch them, but maybe they went to pick up the wood out of here. It says 184 now. It's reasonable that they did. But I don't know. Can't check there. Oh yeah, it says transporting firewood. He must have actually picked it up. Nice. Okay, well, it works. So basically, they picked up charcoal, they dropped it in a storehouse, they went to another storehouse to get what they deserve, and then brought it back. That's great. I just wanted to know. So they don't need the pack station. They don't need to access the pack station in the other settlement. Interesting. Very interesting. Good to know. So it's September right now. We have a, a bunch of families on this, but they're all just waiting and... Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I know why they're not doing anything. I never assigned the fields. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Right, wheat. Let's get these to be wheat. All these inner fields can be wheat. We'll leave that one empty. Uh, we'll do barley on this one and barley on this one. I don't know if we can even manage all of this, but now we should have some jibs. Lots to do, I would imagine. Oh, no, oh, hey, we've got action. Someone's out there, Agnes. She's plowing the fields, man. Good job, finally. Someone who's not afraid to work, huh? And using this advanced technology. You're doing great with it. She's flying along. Now, is there any more houses that need to be built? Yeah, we want to build the one over here. So let's see if we can correct this now. So we'll start here. That's our face. Could we do one massive plot? Oh my god, yes we can. Huge plot for those guys. Love it. So two, just two houses in there. These guys have their little additional houses now on the sides. Uh, we don't have any money left in the region, so we can't do more vegetables. So we'll just add in the extra living space. That's two, four, six, seven, eight in total. And we currently have 12 families. So we can get rid of some houses, but not everything yet. Oh, there we go. We got them coming in now. Plowing by hand. Plowing by hand. I wonder, can you use multiple ox to plow? Because I've assigned this. Let's see. I'm going to unassign it. All right, and we'll see if someone just uses, the, like, oxes themselves. You know what I mean? Like, there's four in total. Some of them are doing things with construction, but I would hope to see some ox being used on multiple fields. Otherwise, it's quite limiting to say that you can only do it with one. I guess it kind of makes sense, though, because we did upgrade the farmhouse to have the ability. But damn, it's quite restrictive to say that just one ox can do it. I guess you really do need multiple farmhouses. It does seem to be the case. I ain't seeing any ox out there. All right, let's put the uh, ox back on. So you're gonna leave that one to fallow and that'll start up next year. Crop rotation, so second year, wheat. That one's fallow as well. Second year, wheat. Maybe we'll just do one barley this year and next year we'll do barley on the other one. Because our population is quite small right now, so can't really do everything anyway. Man, that was a brief, nice bit of, like, sunshine we had there for, like, an hour. Um, oh, you know what I never did? I never stationed the guards out there, so maybe we'll do that. And I never colored these guys the way I want them, so I'm going to change their colors right now. All right, that's what you love to see. The Watt Darren plays colors there. The boys in the line. Leap tier troops. Love it. Absolutely love it. Just give me, like, thousands of these now. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right, so I've told them to spread out as well. Pop them into the sun so we can see them a bit more clearly. We should inspect the troops. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Getting Medieval 2 vibes. Medieval Total War. What is it? Yeah, Medieval Total... Medieval 2 Total War. That's the name of it. <laughs> trying to always remember the proper names because they changed them later to be Total War whatever. Uh, but it reminds me, yeah, just of the men-at-arms... The literal men-at-arms unit used to get in that game. 
Looks so cool. All right, these guys are going to be standing watch <laughs> on uh, the Gnoll. They'll lay down their lives if necessary to protect them. So I'm just going to literally tell them to walk all the way out here. And to be immersive, of course, what I'll do actually is we'll follow the path. How are the fields looking? They're looking great. They're looking damn good, and we're plowing this one. Just one person on that one, whereas everyone else is by hand sowing these fields, the wheat fields. Guess they might have a bit of priority over the barley. So just to go over this place, it might be worth um, just yeah touching on exactly how, all, how it all works. So what we've got is a farmhouse, right? This big plot here, looking out to the mill. Next to it, we have the communal oven. Next to that, we've got the weaver's workshop. Then we have a burgage plot, just a standard house, but with a big vegetable patch here that they can grow. We then have a little sheep farm tucked in behind the farmhouse, and then a storehouse and a granary. So everything's just kind of localized, a little farm area. Diddly squat farms right there. So what would be nice is to have some pastures uh, and get some sheep going so that we can unlock those development points to put sheep on these fields and kind of keep the, fer um, the, the ground fertile. So that's kind of what that's for. But yeah, I just feel like putting pastures down anywhere. We're kind of like ultimately putting them on some of the good fertilities we have. But I guess we just kind of have to, right? I mean, where else can it go? There's a patch up here, I suppose, maybe. Connect this up somewhat reasonably. Maybe that could just be a real big sheep pasture right there. I'll make two of them. So we'll go with this corner, then that corner, then maybe just stop here and go straight across. So that could be one. And uh, we could do another one there, but we'll leave it for now in that corner. So it's able to hold 44. Feels like a lot. But my big question is, how do we bring livestock in here? Ultimately, we need to be making money here. But it's difficult to make money here because we're trading everything to swords that this place is going to make. I guess ultimately we'll just have to sell it on the market first. And just try to get some regional wealth going. And then we can bring in animals and get sheep breeding. That seems like what we have to do in the beginning. So maybe we'll just be selling all our produce at first. Which means we need a trader. A trading post. Um, yeah, I guess I don't see why not have it down by the... Just down here for now. And we can always move it if we're not happy with it. But down by the King's Road. In fact, I'll just push it in just a little bit. I'll just extend that out. That could be our trader. Hopefully they don't have too far to walk away from the storehouses to load that place up. That'll give us the money we need to then allow us to do vegetable patches and things like that. And it'll just be a snowball effect from there. Oh yeah, of course. Check it out. We could just about see him. The boys are on their march out towards the Knoll. Passing by some traders and things. God, man. They could really mess some people up. <laughs> You're walking down the trail, and you just see that in the distance. You're like, oh, I hope they're friendly. Please don't be, like, an asshole. Stay together. Can I stay with the What did he say? I didn't actually quite catch what he said there. He said something as he came up to them. What about this guy? No, our guys are respectable. What did you say? <laughs> yeah, everyone just turns around. That's cool. Alright, they're still on the way. We've got a long walk to go. Bartering, bartering, bartering. Pack station? I thought it said PlayStation. Oh, there we go. There's the mule. Love it. Maybe we could um, clear up this road a bit. That's the King's Road, isn't it? I didn't even build that one. It's just covered in grass. Yeah, there they are. Mule in tow. Carrying a bunch of stuff. Great. Love to see it. So what we'll have to do here now, we've got 19 living space, so I'm just going to start removing some of these houses. That material will get moved over. We currently have 14 families. Alright, so that's 14 and 16 homes. Just get rid of one more. It's just going to slowly relocate all the people out. Please don't break. Good. Alright. Relocate all the people out here. For their multiple plots. Is this other one built yet? No, not yet. So we're getting another one as well in a moment. Alright, let's just go with a real small market. I might just create a another cut-through road here. 
Just something to anchor onto. Just like that. Alright, cool. And then we'll just go with the market and hopefully try to wrap around that. Yeah, that seems reasonable. So 21 locations. Flatten that area out. Keep some of the trees there, maybe. I like the idea that the Null here have just gotten word that 12 men are on the way to help defend the town in case of future attacks. And they think, like, is that what the Lord thinks of us? Just 12 men. He sent just 12. A pitiful 12. When we just got attacked by nearly 100. And then we look at what the 12 are. And we go, oh yeah, they're badass. The most elite 12 troops that have ever set foot in these lands. <laughs> Although they can't quite march together quite effectively, but you know, they can't see very well. It is raining. Who could blame them? Let's get going, boys. Maybe spread out a bit or something. <laughs> You're embarrassing yourselves. There we go. That's better. Now that's what we like to see. All right, cool. We'll just send them into the town, of course, just to preside over the uh, the relocation efforts, and then we'll just let them sit there. And they should gain back their fatigue. I don't think there's any cost to just having them out all the time, so just leave them there, just in case. It's not very many, I agree. If we get attacked by a hundred, well, you know, I'll be, I'd like to see how many they could take down. To be quite frank. <laughs> Oh, the trader is done in the Nall, actually. So, some things do require roots, right? It's a major trade, so it requires a trade route. Pretty much everything in the military category is like that. But for materials and stuff, you can actually just trade it even without paying for the roots to set them up. So, we have a lot of firewood, so I guess we'll just try sell some of that, make some money back. We also, actually, I never thought about it, but we probably have a lot of hides. Yeah, we've got 48. So, we could also sell leather, but a route is required for that one. We could export hides at four per piece. Yeah, let's just do it. So we're gonna export hides. I'm gonna set the amount that I wanna keep down to, to really low, six. So firewood we could sell as well. So just do export, bring that way down. Cool. So try and export that as well. I'll assign two families to it. Now it's gonna be winter, so we can take the families off of farming. Just leave one on it, just, I don't know, in case any maintenance or something needs to be done. We'll put four on this. So load up this place as much as you can. We need someone on the storehouse and the granary. So that's two families on that. Once all the stuff is moved out of this area. Man, we're getting through the uh, wealth here. We're down to 700. We need to sell some more shoes. We've got 250. Yeah, damn. Now, I'm going to turn off the uh, trading for a little while until I think about what we actually need to send over there. Because it's interesting, right? I was like, oh, we could send them over the shoes and they could sell the shoes. But we can't do that because you can only trade things if you're getting something back. And because of the way it works out the value, it's like, well, we would need to pull stuff out of there that's quite valuable. So we can't really do that yet. So there's actually not much we need to really trade between the two just yet. But in future, once we get some money set up and we have vegetables, then we could send out, like, yeah, shoes and get back vegetables and food and stuff. So that could be nice, quite nice. Also, just as a quick recap, we're up to 67 families living here with 73 available. Um, so we have room for five more families to move in. We're also gonna be upgrading some plots when we are able to, such as this one. And we need a few more things for that one. Second type of food. Oh yeah, you can just see the house. See, that's gonna be overlapping that one a bit now. Hmm. It might shift over on reloading the game, though. These have been upgraded. This one is upgraded, and this one isn't just yet. This can go to Tier 3. Alright, they're all going to be Tier 3. Why the hell not? I mean, I guess that is the point. Everything should be like that. Although, just from an aesthetic point of view, we do obviously want Tier 2s and Tier 1s the further out we go. I kind of wish now, like, these didn't have plots at all. These should just be very packed in close together, with more even maybe layered behind them. And then, as we get further out, then we have bigger plots for the Tier 2s. You'd have to redevelop the whole place, though, to do that. Um, you know, initially we needed them this way. But the Knoll is kind of being built that way. It's built forward-planned, I guess, a bit better.
Alright, a lot of the vegetables have been planted. I don't know if they managed to plant everything yet, but not everyone was living over in this area yet. I think next year will be our first real year of testing out this place. But how beautiful is this, man? Looks like The Witcher or something, you know? That's so good. This game probably has one of the most natural, like, snow coverage mechanics I've ever seen, the way it works. It's very slow and subtle, but it just, like, very naturally builds up on everything. It just looks great the way he's done it. Like, it, I, I just feel cold looking at it. <laughs> yeah. It's such an amazing selling point of the game, like, just how it looks. Very cool. Lots to do, lots to build. Still need to decide on a few more plots out that way. I'm just hearing ka -ching constantly as we have traders coming and going, like, just constantly making money or taking money. That's kind of why I said it should be seasonal. Kind of feel like it's a bit too much. I like the farthest frontier method of like one trader comes by and you got to be ready. And it's like, this is it for a year now. Like, make your deals. And then he carts everything off. And he brings things in that you can buy. It's all based on what's in his cart. Can't just get everything. It's like, ooh, the iron trader is coming by. Like, I haven't seen him in like two years. But, you know, if you're preparing well enough, you'll have everything ready to go to make your purchase. I like that. I think even in that game, if I recall correctly, the, the money is physical. You have to, like, load up with gold, I think, to trade for it. I think that's how it's done. I can't, can't quite remember. Oh wow, this happens so- I'm, I'm never prepared for how quickly these go up, but they look really good. They look really good on this side. Super nice. So they have their big pl- Ah, oh, you know what? This- Ah, oh, look at this! This game looks so amazing! Hang on, let me hop down for a second. The lighting- the light of the fire just like- Well, it doesn't look so good looking straight at it, but the way the lighting was just like lighting the guy, chopping the wood from this angle, because it's like becoming nighttime, and then seeing these houses going up in the background. Oh, I just thought it was perfect. And I always hear dogs barking, but I never see them. It's a little disconcerting. <laughs> Need to patch up that hole, some of the <laughs> underneath. Yeah, these look great. This is rivaling that other street, actually, the main street. People need to close their doors. Give me nightmares. What the hell's going on over there? <laughs> You're like standing up on the furthest. Get down. Get down from there. I know it would be such a small thing. Uh, it's totally pointless. Very bottom of the list for things to add. But I'd love to be able to like wave and greet people. <laughs> Oh my god. She is hardcore. Some cultist. Shaving her head. Maybe they all are like that underneath their uh, their garments. It's like Frostpunk, actually. I think all the uh, technocrats shave their head. More efficient. <laughs> Sorry for my poor vocabulary saying the lighting looks great because of the way the lighting was facing the lighting. Couldn't think of another word. It's the same thing I had over the other day with uh, saying layout over and over again. Sometimes um, on videos I remember saying like copious once. It's like, oh, there's a copious amount of this. And I must have said copious maybe five times in the space of like ten minutes. And people were like, oh, he just learned that word and he keeps using it. It's like, yeah, I don't know. I get into a rut sometimes where I over rely on a word. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I just can't think of any other one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright, anyways, jokes aside, let's see how we're doing. How are we loading up? So we're up to 26 regional wealth. We could potentially now actually set up that vegetable plot for this house. It's a really, really big plot, so it could take them a while. Is there two people living here? Two families? There is. Need to name the people in the knoll. Haven't done any of that yet. And these guys need one too. Could actually get more hides with a goat shed. But no, we'll do the vegetable garden. Alright, nice. Actually, yeah, we're making pretty good money now. So that's all of our farming done. All the fields are ready. We have all the plots that I've currently put down ready. 
We have 15 families here and room for 15, so we just need to build more plots if you want to get more people in here. So I'll probably just have to spend a bit of time like working on a layout again to get a few extra people in. We're kind of building a few more houses over towards this side. That's where the market is. It's going to be a little hard to see for a while, but I've just committed to several new plots out this way. So I've tried to give them all decent space out the back. Some have better than others, but pretty happy overall. I uh, haven't filled this one in yet, actually, so we can maybe do that on camera. But this should be enough houses that we can finally remove everything that's back in the village center and relocate it all the way out here. Remember, our market is there, and we still need room for a church and stuff to keep people happy and get them upgraded. I wonder what kind of distance we can deal with with the church. But anyway, let's just speed time up. It's going to take a while. We have five families on construction. Hopefully we can just drag everything out here and get working on it now. The farmhouse. In fact, I could actually take the ox off of this for a little while. While we're building out here. They can move some of the timber over. Which we... We're actually getting kind of low on it. We're down to 17 now. Some of our lumberjack huts can be destroyed as well. Yeah, it's going to be a little tough to see until they actually come to fruition, but... Generally quite happy. Some of them with the smaller plots could maybe have animals at the back instead of um, actual farm plots. For vegetable patches and stuff. Oh yeah, this was supposed to connect. I forgot that. Let's get that just over like that. It's a bit better. Construction finished. Burgage plot level one. Well, there we go. There's one right there. Let's get them the vegetable patch. Straight up. Looking good. Big house. Yeah, I'm loving this. This is much more what the game is about, isn't it? I feel bad now for my rigid street. Although it does look good when it's upgraded, but it was so long before we got to see it. Before we got to really see its potential that it's like, ah, oh, this would have been nice to start off this way. <laughs> now we're just making passive trades constantly here. This is great. It's faster than I can even upgrade these guys. There we go, just like that. A little group of three houses down here. Nice. Wow, I can't believe how much money we made. Yeah, man, if I start in the game again, I would do things different. It's like what they were saying in that tweet. If you want to rush trade early game by selling things like iron and stuff, you can make loads of money. The fact that I didn't even pay for trade routes for half of that stuff is great. It's really good. This definitely seems perfect for another plot, but I don't want to build... I'm, could we... Would you be able to see it if I do? So something like that, and just extend out to the corners. That's what you're left with. It's nice that... Oh, right, it actually inverts the colors because it's winter. That's great. So this would be three... Yeah, just three little houses here with three plots at the back. That's pretty good, right? Happy enough with it. Let's go. And we can finally relocate all those other guys. And we can always add on the expansions. To Not everyone has an expansion. And I've done that on purpose. I wanted to kind of vary it up a bit. And it depended on some of the layouts. Sometimes what I would do is I'll put down the houses. And then I'll remove one. And then like turn them sideways and just change one on the end, for instance. And it could actually look really nice that way. You kind of get more, out, more space out of it that way. It's like, oh, the little algorithm for working out space is pretty good, but it's like that one house on the end just isn't quite making use of its final bit of space, so I delete it and rebuild it myself. That seems to have worked out a bit. All right, we're up to... Amazingly, this place has 17 families already. That's kind of crazy. But yeah, let's start removing some of the houses. God, I'm so lost during winter. There we go. Get some of the material back as well. 17, that's 19 with the potential for four more. All right, cool. Ah, look, it's March. Spring has arrived. So are we shearing sheep? 
Is that gonna happen soon? Or are these people just dicking around, basically, not really working? I mean, it's still fairly cold out there, so I can imagine you want to keep their fur for a little bit longer, their wool. How much time do we have? Hey, the music's changed. Are we getting attacked? No, we're okay. So, it says food. Only two months of food. Uh-oh. We may have overgrown ourselves a little bit. 64 meat, 18 vegetables, 11 eggs, but the foraging deposit will be coming back now in a moment, so we'll just put someone back on that. But yeah, soon enough, 225 people will have to start relying on external sources of food coming in here. Or just build a second hunter, to be honest, because we've never gone below, like, 30 on the hunting, and it's always had two people on it, so sure, let's get another one. Until we start seeing that getting lowered down, why not? Um, what are we looking for? Is it gathering? Yeah, it is. Hunting camp. Just put it down next to the other one. Cool. How are my snowy houses looking? Oh, they look so good. Oh my god, they look so good. Let me just take a little screenshot of this. With the way the sun is hitting it right now, something like this would be a perfect little screenshot. What are we up to now? 71 families with room for 78. And that's mostly in these tier 3 plots. I'm going to start really in the next episode building out this way big time. We've got 68 timber. I've been building it up for a long while. For two reasons. One was for the manor and one is for a big housing extension we want to do out this side. So that should hopefully look good. Alright, I like to see everyone work in their little plots. It's great. We're up to 132. Wow, I can't believe you, you really do make money very easily in this, actually. Alright. Now, for the farmers, plowing by hand and sowing. So we could get more people on this now. And let's get the ox on there, because it helps move materials apparently a bit faster. Let's get farming. Now, this one. Again, veg. Pretty much all veg, I think. Yeah, it's going to be so much veg. <laughs> Everyone has their own little farms. Alright, so we're up to nearly 22. And we can expand some of those houses as well, which we want to do. Alright, so just for a bit of a recap, now that the snows are melting away, we can kind of see what the farms are capable of producing. So not only do we have all of these vegetable patches everywhere, which I guess don't need crop rotation, they seem to be just fine. But the ones that actually do, we can see all of the wheat that we're making. So potentially up to 60, 34, 44, and 34 again. So you're looking at around 200 wheat or less, just a little less. And then 54 barley potentially here. With a couple fallow fields on either side. Down here, two big ones up there. Um, so we can make them fallow. It depends on what we think we'll get out next year. Maybe one of them we could run again. And ultimately the goal is going to be to get ourselves some tier 2 plots here so that we can get another development point. I suppose something like fertilization would be good. It allows to use a fallow field as a pasture, which rapidly restores lost fertility. So I think we'll go for that next, because we're not really facing droughts. Rye is an interesting one to go with, but rye seems to have the exact same um, fertility, pretty much as wheat, but it does say it's more resilient. So maybe it grows better during the winter or something. I don't know. Like, in terms of gameplay, anyway. I'm just wondering what the differences would be. But yeah, I like the way this place has popped up. Real nice. This street, in particular, I think is cool. Just having the three on that side, and then having, like, four on this side, because technically these are two little small plots as well. The wide roads all the way around. You wind up towards the windmill and the farmhouse, and then we've got little market. I love that. I think it's cool. So, I think somewhere down here, maybe, or down around this area, church, maybe a second market or something close by to these guys build out another farmhouse, make use of all this land. That could be great. That'd be nice. And then a barley field out here would be good, because barley is quite rich, fertility-wise, out this way. So just need to chop down more territory. Or uh, more trees. Alright, we now have enough houses that we can actually delete all of the remaining houses in the initial area for this place. We get rid of all those. Bye bye. Everyone now lives over in our new area. You guys can get walking. 
How cool is this, huh? We're really... We're doing it. We're surviving and thriving, I would say. And the next thing would just be, if these are empty, then we can destroy them. You can always put down new ones. They're built really quickly anyway, but I just want to get rid of them so they don't get logs moved to them, because it seems like they try to place logs in every one. Alright, so we'll just have to put one there, and we'll build a new one out here by the back of the trader. Just clear some of the uh, trees around this way. Logging camp for future fields. Don't want to go too far into eroding that berry deposit, though, so you've got to be careful about that, which is there. And we can put the foragers back on now as well. Maybe just one. They're protecting every log that gets moved. <laughs> love to see it. I love to see to see our colors being represented here. It's so awesome. Yeah, it's just cool. The barter connection is turned off, by the way, for now, until we start making some money, and then we can bring in some... Yeah, we should get that other trader built, actually. We are pulling in enough money to start getting some sheep, some serious sheep on the go. So a livestock trading post, why not just place it somewhere here? Connect that in that way. Boom. And we have a pasture ready and dedicated all the way over there for them. So they'll just get guided over to it. All right, I think that's going to have to be it. You know, it's just largely foundational, setting up tons of farms, basically. That's why I joke saying it's Farmville today. And then... Over here, population's just growing as usual. Everything's looking good. Quite orderly and rigid, though, which I've learned now is not the way, whereas over here it looks so much cooler. So, gonna try to focus on having more disorganized, you know, looking plots and stuff over this way. Although, maybe a bit more of a high density district here, potentially. I think you get all the material back, so you could start deleting these and like reshaping the town if we really wanted to, but I'm not gonna do that anytime soon. That's, that's way in the future, kind of theorizing right now. Uh, I would be a little bit worried about food for this place, so... Yeah, more vegetable plots, bigger plots maybe out this way or something as we wrap around towards the back. That would make sense for them to get more vegetables for them. Keep food going. Eggs. All that kind of stuff, because we've just been growing kind of uncontrollably without really uh, keeping up with the food. Which is something I talked about earlier on as well, actually. Alright, anyways, that's gonna have to be it. I'm really enjoying the game. Hope people are too, and uh, appreciate all the positive feedback. And the um, generosity that a lot of people have out there. So I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.